not only taking in account uh, th that the time to the end of this conference is rather limited, but also for uh, other reasons, we are not going to intru introduce extensively the background of the people behind the table. But I would like to ask them all just one simple question to answer in a few words. And then I'd like to start uh, this time with Alistair Driver to tell what he likes most about his job. Maybe this tells more about his job and himself than any other introduction. <laughs> Obviously, that was a difficult one, but I decided that um, it was this combination of, of things, really, that on the one hand, um, this kind of role, the role that most of you in this room will fulfill, requires um, determination, uh, passion and commitment uh, over a very long period to achieve the kind of uh, sustained changes in ecosystem quality and functioning that we're seeking. Uh, and those are all qualities, of course, uh, that, that I value and admire in this river restoration community. But it requires that kind of long-term determination, uh, which is matched at the same time by, a, by, because we're working in a river and wetland environment, being able to enjoy uh, the sort of instant satisfaction and pride that you get from delivering a, a restoration project, where you get that sort of immediate response um, from wildlife and people. Um, so uh, I, I think it, that, that, that kind of combination is, is essential for us to, um, to keep us all interested and stimulated uh, and motivated over a long career. Thank, Thank you, Alistair. Could you continue, Enrique, to answer the same question? Okay, well, um, I probably have a very different job to most people here. <laughs> um, so working in Coca-Cola, of course, one of the great perks is that one can work for one of the most... Um, recognized brands in the world and you might think what you want uh, about about the brand itself but it certainly is something that inspires people that reaches a lot of people that resonates and that is a great opportunity of course to also communicate and raise awareness about issues that are beyond the brand itself but more about life humanity the universe and certainly about sustainability and if that comes with a company behind it that really um, is um, committed to sustainability and has made um, water its business to some extent and really a core part of its strategy, then it gives, I believe, a very great platform to um, channel investment, activity, uh, and a lot of the skills that are sitting within that company, including marketing and communication, into, into areas like water, water resources, and something that is very unwieldy for business, which is integrated water management or river basin management, which just doesn't even come across the tongue very easily. So that is an opportunity to combine those two worlds and, and really make a difference. Thank you. Mr. Schweiger. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Just to introduce myself, I am representing Austria and all international fora, respectively, uh, formulating Austrian positions in those water fora. There are many, many reasons why I really love my job, but I will focus on three issues. One is the, to have the opportunity to have a, an open discussion on experiences, views, position, without the usual national taboos and no-go areas. The second one is to learn from each other and to bring back inspiring examples for domestic uses. And the most important one for me is to shape processes and frames to make things happen. And uh, I could provide several examples, starting from negotiating the EU Water Framework Directive in reaching a agree political agreement for the Floods Directive in Brussels within a record time of a few months. And that's it in particular. And to be proud what can be achieved. Okay, thank you very much. Alexander, will you continue? Thank you. Um, I think we are all living in some type of transition. We are working in regions in different parts of the world and uh, we, we are exposed to the political transitions, to the historical and cultural transitions. And that refers very much also to the natural resources use and development. And uh, being part of that transition and being able to give some stimulations and uh, contribute to certain processes, that is what is really fascinating to me. Thank you. And Alice. 
There are fast, I think there are many things you are fascinating you in your job, but please go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yes. Well, I, I will reduce the Carl's number three from only two things. Okay. For this opportunity. Uh, uh, the first one is for sure I would not do this job I am doing if I would not be keen of analysis, uh, assessments or uh, applications of, of methods uh, regarding the river management uh, in order to get new knowledges and to, to promote them to the people or to, to river managers and the, by these to, at the end of the day, to help <coughs> uh, the rivers to stay as they are or even to improve. This would be the first one in a very short words. Maybe I was too long before, so I'm shorter now. And the second one for sure are the early mornings, uh, well, uh, the field work in early mornings along the river. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'm going to warn you, this was the easy question. Now the difficult questions will come. And um, I'd like to start with Karl Schweiger and answer the question, what to his opinion, to your opinion, the Drava pilot contribute to an increased restoration of the river Drava? Okay. Yeah. My voice. <laughs> I think I, I have to, to go back to the starting point of the Austrian part of the Drava River. We had a very disastrous flood in the mid-60s of the last century, which resulted in straightening of the river, reinforced banks, and in addition, we had a chain of hydropower uh, plants. And you have probably still in your mind the last very ugly slides of, uh, of Alexander showing the dis dis disastrous banks of the reservoirs, which had been made of uh, asphalt and concrete. So what does the lessons learned from the Drava? Drava was a pilot in Austria, mirroring uh, experiences to other catchments in Austria. First of all, river restoration needs clear visions and clear, clear goals. I think that's one of the prerequisites. The second lesson learned uh, from the Austrian side was that we have to abandon our usual silos we are working in and to work much more cross-sectoral. What do I mean with this? We have to bring on board uh, decision makers, stakeholders, NGOs, general public, because at the very end they will have to meet the bill. So we have to share vision with them, we have to convince them. And, uh, Working across sectors, flood protection, river managers, managers hydropower uh, producers, they all have to be on board to, be, to make a really uh, constructive project. And my last message is never give up too early and do not sur surrender if you are really convinced of a good project. And I will focus here on one facet of our work this is to ensure river, river continuity in the chain of hydropower plants. Hydropower companies are a very strong sector. Alex, uh, uh, Alex has pointed it out already. In Austria, they are producing 65% of electricity, so they are really strong. And it was extremely difficult to bring them on board. And I know experiences from many other countries highlighting the difficulties, excessive costs, for fish migration aids, then uh, long-lasting permits in place for many years, difficult to intervene with. And Austrian, my colleague and me, have been accused in conferences like this to be the grave diggers for the hydropower sector in Austria. But in spite of this very challenging reputation, we succeeded in the long run to bring them on board and you have seen in 2021, we are confident to have all the chain of hydropower plants uh, uh, possible for migratory fish. And this is one, I think, the biggest successes. Yeah, and you think that the Sea River Project as a pilot, because that's where we are discussing, contributed to this on, it, on itself, to the conclusions you are drawing? The stakeholders it, it getting it. It definitely contributed to other approaches in other catchments in Austria. Yeah. So we are using similar approaches 
and really taking as many people on board as possible and tapping also yeah. all potential sources of finances. Coca-Cola is sitting side by side with me. We know each other from the Danube, work in the Danube region, but we are tapping the, the uh, restoration funds in Austria, which is dotated with 140 million euros, the uh, flood management funds, we are tapping stakeholders, they have to contribute, we are tapping EU funds. So wherever a cent would be available, we are trying to get hold on. Thank you very much. Then I now like to continue with Alistair. What, what you are more an outsider than? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, and actually, it's um, with a, a sense of envy, yeah. really, that you have managed to reach this agreement between hydropower and, in, in, in our case, fisheries interests. You know, we have taken two years to come to try to come to an agreement on guidance, on decision making for hydropower. Just guidance, let alone doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very impressed that if, this, if, it's, if it's the case that the C project has helped to move you towards that position where these sectors are meeting together and agreeing uh, to make all of these, uh, agreeing standard procedures and, and to make all of these structures truly passable to all the right species, then that is a remarkable achievement because, of course, your hydropower, most of your hydropower, is significantly larger in scale than those which we have to deal with. Yeah. And we can't even manage it for small structures. So, um, so uh, yeah, great envy there. And that, that's, for me, the standout factor. OK. Thank you. Ulrike, you want to add your contribution to this from a completely different perspective, maybe? Yeah. yeah. With a caveat that this is a completely different perspective. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the, the big message from both of uh, the presentations and the, the example that came out for me was the message of integration. Integration along a river, integration of thinking about the different issues, integration of the possible solution that could be tackled, uh, and of course of the stakeholders and, and different parties to work with. And I think that is really critical, and you, you referenced uh, uh, that we've met before and on different occasions. I believe and from, from the experience that we had by working with WWF and ICPDR and with local stakeholders on a number of um, water projects and, and also around river restoration along, uh, in, in the Danube Basin, it starts with the political will and the good framework and the plan um, of, and the vision that you, that you referenced of where do we want to go, what is the ultimate outcome and the ultimate benefit that has to be. And then on that basis to then work together and integrate uh, what are the actions that help doing that? We worked uh, uh, on the on the Drava on the last bit in Kopachki Rit that, that was shown uh, with WWF. That was very rewarding. Uh, it really worked. It had a fantastic outcome in terms of reconnecting wetland areas uh, to uh, the river to flood them again to create uh, flood spaces or spaces for water, but to also uh, encourage local uh, small local business and fish farming, etc. So have community benefits. But it, it worked in itself, but it particularly worked because we knew it was part of a bigger plan that made sense and that, that you know, fitted different solutions and benefits together. And I think that is absolutely critical to, at the end, come to a joint outcome that, that sort of makes sense. Um, and, uh, and funding certainly is, is one of the, uh, the big um, uh, issues there as well, is to, to not only look at the solutions and the possible actions together, but also how can we put the right funding together and leverage each other uh, which through the life uh, funds, of course, the local funds, private funds, together increases the scale and the impact. So the integration of all this, I think, was a great message from okay. this example. Thank you. Then I would like to invite the, the two presenters to give their opinions. The reactions are a little bit beyond the scope of the project, but it is what to, to be expected. But listening to this uh, comments or, I would say, uh, experiences from uh, the other panelists. Do you recognize this type of discussions that you had in the, in the project and that you say, we recognize this, but on the other hand, we can contribute to it to be, make it more effective or to get more funding or those kind of things? So, uh, well, thank you very much for the uh, uh, second chance today to discuss in fact, the SCR project in terms of what we heard from the colleagues. Uh, I, I see that, uh, in fact, we did really a big job in the project, uh, not only by the comments of the colleagues, but now when I'm recalling the last two years of, of 
actions we did in the broad international partnership. Uh, I can agree in many issues with uh, what I heard right now, uh, uh, but I have to add that in, in my belief, the, the added value of the SE River project is uh, in, uh, in articulation of, um, let's say, a common uh, consensual visions about what uh, involved stakeholders in particular part, portion of the river wants to achieve. And uh, uh, so you list the sectors involved, the relevant sector, you list the stakeholders, you call them to the meetings, you discuss with them the issues, you even su succeed to that two sectors are sitting together while before they even did not have a coffee together and so on. And these are the achievements, of course, yeah. of the SERA project. And what I have to tell almost at the end of the project is that many times when I'm thinking about the results of the project, uh, I can tell you that uh, it's, it's also hard with this part because this, what we did, is a soft approach, is a soft knowledge, is, a, is, a, is work with people which cannot be really counted or calculated, which can be measured in other issues, like, for example, the stakeholders' agreements are of what are their common vision and will, how to work or manage the, 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 the river in, in, in times in front of us. It's a soft approach, but it was a hard job. Indeed. Yeah, but you agree very much with Karl Schweiger, because he started his first comment saying, uh, we can only work when we have a clear yes. picture yes. Uh, where we are working on, uh, what the clear wishes are. And maybe you still disagree a little bit, but then you know where yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And that was what the SE River project was all about. Yes. And first, individually, all the stakeholders, as far as I understood, then all together, what are the common opinions, what are the differences, how can we mm -hmm. come together and how can we integrate this in the plan? It was like you said, yes, but I, I would like to add just one more thing. Even if when you are working with the sectors or, or stakeholders or people, uh, you have to be prepared. It's, it's not only about the meetings and the workshops. We all know that if you want to have a positive process, if you want to lead the process in a sovereign way, you have to do lots of expert work indoor and outdoor before you get the chance to go to the stakeholders. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Alexander? Yeah, I also want to follow up from what Karl has said in, in terms of uh, not only having a good idea and, and a commitment for that, but also not to give up. Uh, when I recall the time uh, two years ago that we were uh, presenting this, this vision for the, for the project, yeah, the concept of the project to the various partners in, 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 uh, in, in these Southeast European countries, um, I was not the only one who was skeptical. Yeah. And uh, I was looking into faces who said, well, <coughs> I don't know where that will be happening, but definitely not in our river. And um, what we did then was learning by doing. Uh, we pushed our partners to actually do this integrated management, uh, go step by step with the stakeholder dialogue. And at the end, I think most of them were really surprised that they got the agreement and the signatures from the partner, from the stakeholders in the region. And that was, was really a, a very positive experience, uh, even if you have an innovation that was never tested in, in, in your region, but maybe somewhere else. And of course, you have very different starting points and there are very different situations. Uh, the, the basic concept of communication works. And uh, that, that is all what it's about. Um, we have done this exercise, we have written a roadmap now that uh, people can, can, can copy and try to apply in their own uh, individual situations. Um, but um, it's the only way to make really progress, progress in river management. Yeah, without integration, I think uh, we will not improve uh, our performance. Okay, then I want to add another question. Um, using this method, using the results, the commitment of the stakeholders, uh, as you, even by signing, also create some expectations for the future. And how are you, what's your confidence that you really can fulfill these expectations of the stakeholders in the future? Because it was quite a process, you made a start, it was quite some passion, the results are there, but the real integration and finally the real implementation still needs to be done. 
Yeah. What are the risks? What are the challenges? What are the certainties? I would say there are chances and there are risks, for sure. And we, we are aware of them. I, uh, in my personal belief, I have to add that not all of the stakeholders' agreements were physically signed. Some of them were just uh, adopted, I would say, okay. in, 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 a, in a Grammys or, or in a groups of stakeholders. And now what we have to do is we, sh we shall uh, then as soon as possible find additional, uh, additional uh, options or, or possibilities to continue the work with concrete projects which are already listed within the SEDR project. So work of the stakeholders on the pilot uh, areas and along the international Drava river run ended with concrete actions which shall lead the Drava river closer to the goals of the 2008 Drava declaration. This is the contemporary river. So, uh, uh, so in order to fulfill, to, to execute, what we agreed about, which actions, what kind of projects we shall apply for, who shall do what, at what time, we shall find sources for this, for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alastair, you, you are a little bit looking and thinking, what does this mean? In, yeah. And I would say on one hand in your situation, but you, you had already some warnings, you said there's much more happening in your country than with us. Uh, in, concerning hydropower, but there are also other aspects. What brings this question for about the stakeholders and the real realization of the targets in the future? What brings this up with you? Yeah, with what was um, coming to my mind linked to what I said earlier about um, looking away from the river for some of the problems. So yeah. you are tackling here the big problems, you know, in, in the river corridor. But eventually when you're on top of those, then you need to be looking further afield, uh, further upstream away to the hills and uh, you know beyond the floodplain presumably for some of the other issues that need to tackle so that would be the next logical step to take. Yeah. okay thank you very much the, the the original question was from how far broad the drava pilot project uh, river restoration uh, ecological river restoration, more towards the river management I would uh, b broaden the question so far. The, the theme of this conference is that we should connect uh, river restoration sink and to integrate the river basin management. So go out of your mind. And I, I, I would say, and I ask you, when you take this conference in consideration, the C project as a basis for that, how do you look at the future that you can really integrate in general, but in specific in certain bases you are working for, river restoration in such a way that it really comes to innovate this integrated river basin management. And now I'm not appointing one to answer this question first. It's the first one who points his finger who gives the first answer. It's difficult. You, you first. May I? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the term which I just noted down was resilience. I think uh, we need to be resilient uh, against failures. Um, in, in terms of rural management and uh, having worked for WWF for a number of years, uh, I mean, that was part of the job description. Um, we, we try to save the world, but we will fail, of course, to, to some extent, but uh, maybe we improve it also to another extent, and that's actually what, what makes us uh, going. Um, so, uh, the, uh, trying the impossible is, 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 is one way, but going step by step is another okay. way. And that's exactly what we did. And uh, I think that's also the message from this project uh, to other river regions um, or environmental issues. Um, I think we don't have so much choice in, 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 in the way we, we are managing our natural resources. OK, thank you very much. Ulrike, may I ask you if you could add something to this? <laughs> maybe, maybe I could give a small hint. Up till now, I have not heard the word uh, of the public uh, participation, involvement, etc. And when I'm listening to the answer giving so far, I think, yeah, these are all the river experts to a certain extent. But where are we doing this for? This is for all the people in the basins. Where are they? And you're absolutely, I mean, we, we haven't aligned this, but that was, uh, would have been exactly my point, is there's a fantastic audience here 
that works on this every day. Um, you do a lot of work and it is a very tight community, of course, that needs to ex um, exchange best practices and know-how and, and understand what, what each are doing. But indeed, the question is, who are the beneficiaries of this? Who, how, how much is the integration and the engagement of the wider public actually been successful? And, and what are the opportunities to, to improve that? And I believe, I mean, from my completely, you know, the dummy perspective, and, and, and I'm, I'm feeling I'm a bit of an external audience here that that uh, been parachuted in, is the communication about these topics. I think there's a huge opportunity to improve that. I've heard a lot, um, and the first sort of word about simplification. I think simplification is a big task for something so complex, but it needs to be simplified to be communicated better to a broader audience, um, which makes it then also more tangible for people. So what exactly is it that we're doing, and what is the benefit that this is going to bring to me, which is another point, personalization. What is the benefit to me as a citizen, as a business, as a user, as a whoever I am, and whatever role as a stoke, stakeholder in, in that particular area I'm taking. I think that is the personalization, the personal interest, the personal benefit, the outcome that this will bring to me and my community it, it is very critical to get people uh, bought in. And the more it is technical and very complicated, the more there's a distance, of course, uh, naturally with that. And I think overcoming that with the different tools that are now you know, much more at our availability, and I've, I've seen a, a lot of the work from the DRAW in terms of video uh, work, in terms of engaging, communication, uh, on the spot locally to, com to communities, but also bringing the message and telling that story. I think that is uh, really exemplary work and, and maybe as part of the best knowledge sharing, the communication part in the future could take another role and, and should also be shared. And I think we will, we will see something uh, that would help with that, but I think I could, would encourage that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Carl, you want to... I, I, I would add three different aspects. First. For the follow-up of the process, I'm quite optimistic because the follow-up process is clearly embedded in the implementation of three EU directives, Water Framework Directive, Flood Directive, Nature 2000 Directive. And there's a clear vision, a clear goal, where to go. What is a little risk is, in times of austerity, maybe some of the steps forward will be postponed for one or two or three years, but the overall goal is accepted and they are quite optimistic. Coming down to, uh, to public participation, yes, we have please. for the two directives, we have the process of public participation and based on the smooth running process of the Trava River, we have in two other provinces of Austria the so-called river dialogue where experts of subcatchments and managers of subcatchments go come to the communities, to the mayors, have open <coughs> sessions explaining and simplifying what we are going for, what are the benefits for nature, but what are also the benefits for the citizens there. And I think that's a, somehow a cumbersome process, but a very effective one on the long run, because you have a basis for follow-up to reach your goals. Was this number one or number two? You it had three points. Number point. three. It's number three already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I, I invite you now because I know that the concept to uh, deal with the public concerning river management is a very special one. So maybe you could, from that point of view, give your reaction to how to involve the public as well. Yeah, so it, it, I think that's, this is when the real innovation comes in. You know, a lot of what we talked about, you know, let's be honest, it's not truly innovative. It's great examples, but many they take bits of innovation that have already you know been delivered many years ago if you take that conversation with stakeholders to genuine fruition you should be able to get to the point where those communities downstream are prepared to understand first of all understand yeah. the issues that are coming from upstream yeah. and are prepared to fund them and when you can get downstream communities to contribute to the funding of upstream solutions uh, then you've really achieved that. And that's something that we are struggling with uh, in the UK. Yeah, but your conceptual approach with the River Trust is uh, something that could help very much in this, or not? Absolutely. The, yeah. These independent stakeholders yeah. uh, representing local groups yeah. are able to transcend those boundaries, mm -hmm. but still to get to the bottom of it, yeah. you need to achieve the funding mechanism which allows money to be delivered 
upstream for the benefit of downstream. I know, but on the other hand, now I come back to uh, the two presenters of the, the DRAVA project. Um, the question about involving the public, this was not directly included in your project, but you, of course, touched the subject with the stakeholders, or you didn't? You mean in the SEREA project? Yes, the SEREA project. The, the, core, the core business of the project was involvement of a cross-sectoral communication. Yeah, cross-sectoral, but, but is, is the public a sector or is it more than a sector? Sorry? Is it a sector yeah, or is yeah, it wider no, no, than no, no, a sector? No, no. I, I mean, at the end, with, within the, on the micro level, with the, with the um, workshops, we, we promoted, of course, also the wider public was all, all, all in, in, in invited, all, but, I mean, involved. invited, at least invited. Yeah. Okay, Alexander? And, yeah, I would just like to add one more issue regarding, because your question before was regarding the, how much the SE River project will, will contribute to the river restoration processes. Uh, if I may just add here also to the Elster's presentation before on, on river restoration, you, you told us that you have two types of river restoration, one more in upstream regions, more, more remote from the people, and the other one in the urban areas. Now, regarding the Drava River, I believe uh, a Drava River for sure needs have possess session, sections where river restoration is possible, is needed, and will be applied probably in I hope so in, in, in close future. But we have to, to devote this river restoration to one which is called the managed restoration and the other one which is called the self restoration. And these are two completely not completely different, but two different approaches, two different processes involving uh, stakeholders and sectors in a different ways. And in next projects, following the s project, we will have to think about the, this, uh, uh, I would say, alternative ways or, or new, new ways or new combinations of involving stakeholders and wider public, depending on whether we will play the self-restoration speaking only about the restoration, or the managed one. This is very important in my view. Thank you. Okay. Alexander? Yeah, in, in, in terms of uh, who to involve and how much to, can we actually involve, uh, we have, of course, a, a bottleneck of capacities. Yeah? Who is actually ready to spend private time or professional time in going through dialogue processes or, or even involvement into complex projects? Uh, I mean, that's, that's a minority, of course. And uh, it will eventually end up with, with a number of experts or uh, professional representatives of sectors yeah, who will engage more than the wider public. But um, I was uh, really uh, impressed by a study from, from uh, the Boko University, Mrs. Kastenberg, uh, some, a year ago she gave me the, those results and um, they were presented actually in this uh, uh, conference uh, this morning. Uh, about what is actually the, uh, the, the knowledge and the awareness of the local stakeholders in two Austrian rivers, and one of them was the Upper Trava, about ecosystem services and the work that is being done uh, uh, by, by, by the river managers. And the result was that actually the awareness is pretty high. People are aware of what's going on, in which way the rivers are managed. They appreciate the restoration works. They appreciate the ecosystem services that are provided and they want to benefit for, uh, from them also in the future. So we have a trend towards the river. We observe that in the recreation uh, uh, activities but also the tourism activities, people want to go closer to the river. They see that this is a fascinating part of the landscape. It's not just the, high, uh, the tops of the mountains anymore but it's also so the, the rivers of the water. systems. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. On the other hand, I would say when you, you say the time is scarce, capacities is scarce, money is scarce, on the other hand, it's, to my opinion, also the task of a government uh, to concentrate on public participation for their own sake, I would say. Yeah? Because on one hand, uh, you, you want the rivers and you are the government appointed by your people to take care of this. So on the other hand, you have also to, the responsibility to include them in the process, to communicate with them and to in, inform them. So and at the end, when there are elections, uh, the public realizes that when they were not involved, they might get to some other results by voting for the government. So it's all in the game, to my opinion, and it's also up to the public to play that game. I try to uh, conclude and to end up uh, 
we prepared some of the information we shared, but I come to the last question. There was not really prepared or discussed, but you can almost expect to, expect to get that question. When we organize a, or I would say the next conference, what would be the conference theme for the next time? Who wants to answer that question? Would it be a circus traveling around to go to all the public and inform them that the expert and us just human beings and they share with rivers and water on one hand as experts, but they know also how the people think about it or how can we bring in the voice of the public in this type of conference, I would say. Is this something that would be of interest? Or are there marketing tools from other companies like Coca-Cola that could be used by us in a positive way like they do to sell the product? Open question. No, no answers. No rejection as well. <laughs> no. Well, I end up with uh, leaving this question to all of us because uh, it was too difficult to answer, I know, but it's nevertheless the question we need to answer more or less for ourselves. We had a first uh, conference last year, we have a second one now. We brought the river restoration closer to the management and we said this is a, a nice step forward, but still we are not there where we need to be. So when we want to co contribute in the future to this development, we, answer, we need to answer this question for ourselves, of course, in a wider uh, audience here with more people than only the ECRR or continued CE project. But we need to answer the question, what are the directions of such a conference to contribute to this type of development? I thank you very much. Uh, as Ade said, uh, you get presented a book. It's Bud's book, he said. It's not my book. <laughs> it's a book. Maybe one day. Uh, yeah, maybe one day. But it's a book about uh, water supply in, uh, in uh, Vienna. And uh, at least this book brings uh, not only the public, but also you closer to uh, certain aspects of water management. Thank you very much once more. Uh, I know that at the end of such a conference, somebody is uh, asking different questions. It's always uh, difficult to see what the, uh, direction they want to get answers. You gave the perfect answers, and I thank you very much for that.